Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to Exotic Academy. The topic for today's video is arrays. Okay. So imagine we had to record the age of everyone in a class. We could do it by declaring a variable for each person. As in, we could declare student 1 as integer and then record that student's age as 18. So a variable is just a way of storing data. It's a value of sorts and giving it a label so our program can refer to it later. So say as an example, we can take the variable as a drawer. Say a variable declared as student one would be a drawer with a student one label on the outside and the age of the student inside. So for the whole class, we would have to declare a lot of variables, say 30 variables for 30 students. This makes so much unnecessary code. Um, while certainly possible, this is not a practical method of recording such data. Suppose the program needed to record the ages of 100 students. The programmer would need to make 100 variables for each student. A better method to solve the problem is to use an array. An array is a data structure that holds similar related data. An array is like a collection of boxes, each of which is called an element. A variable can just store one element, one value. However, an array can store lots of values, lots of elements. Like a cell, a cell can store just one value. However, a table can, has a lot of cells that can store a lot of values. Similarly, we can imagine it, the array as a chest of drawers and we call the chest of drawers a student's age and we can have drawers for every student. So array stores data elements in a certain order. They store data of just one type. An array of student name would store only data of student names as in string. An array of student's age would store data as in teacher type as in 18, 17, whatever the age. And each element in an array relates to a specific place in memory. So before an array can be used, it must first be declared. To declare an array, a programmer gives it at least two properties, an identifier, which is its name, and the size of the array, which is the number of elements the array will hold. Values are assigned to an element in an array by referring to the element's position. For example, in this array, we are declaring an array of countries and it has three variables, three elements, USA, Austria and Turkey. Therefore, the lower bound of the array is one and the upper bound of the array is three. The array is of type string. The value USA would be assigned to the first element in the array. Similarly, Austria would be assigned to the second element in the array and turkey to the third. In arrays, values in elements can be olden at any point simply by assigning another value to that element. So if we want to reassign the value of an array element, we would do so by using its index number. So in our last array countries, if we wanted to change the first array element USA, we would take index number one and we could replace it say Germany. So now our array would read Germany, Austria and Turkey. Similarly, values are retrieved from an element in the array by again referring to the element's position. So if we wanted to extract the second country from the array countries, we would use its index number two, which would display as the country Austria. Values from arrays are retrieved to display them on screen, to perform calculations on them, and other things. When iterating through arrays, in pseudocode, the first element of an array is always at index position 1 not 0. Here an array of student's name is declared and it has 10 elements. For displaying all the elements of the array instead of writing code for each element of the array we can use a for loop. The for loop will iterate 10 times and display all the elements stored at the index location of the array student's name. In pseudocode, the first element of an array is always at index position 1, not 0. Now this array has been initialized by three strings, USA, Austria and Turkey. Suppose we wanted the user to themselves enter a country of their own. For this, we would use the for loop and we would ask the user, prompt the user three times to write in a country of their choice.
have understood the topic for any questions please write in the comment section below